I'm going to caption this one, Lord of the Rings meets Breaking Bad. Cause why not? What's going on YouTube? Michael R. Schulteis here, author of The Rostaval Saga, which you can see on the shelf behind me. Today we're going all the way back to 1977 with the publication of Lord Foulsbane by Stephen R. Donaldson. The first book in the first trilogy of the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. So, let's get right into it. Lord Foulsbane is the story of Thomas Covenant, a successful author who has lost everything because of leprosy. His world now revolves around the fact that he is a leper, shunned and outcast by society. He's lost his family, but he remains doggedly determined to survive in the face of this world that wants to shun him and deny him his humanity. When Covenant is transported to a magical world called the Land, he is confronted by an evil force, an evil power, Lord Fowl, who charges him with a message of doom that he is supposed to carry to the lords of the Land. But Covenant finds himself unable to believe in the Land and the healing that it offers him. He is hailed as a reincarnation of an ancient hero, Beric Halfhand, who bears the power of white gold, the only power that can save the Land but a power that Covenant himself has no idea how to use. So, let's get a little deeper and talk about the characters in the story, especially Thomas Covenant himself. Now, there's a reason I captioned this one, Lord of the Rings meets Breaking Bad, and it's because Thomas Covenant is an anti-hero. He's a rather unpleasant character, and his personality in the whole reminds me of a cactus. By that, of course, I mean that he's prickly which I can respect, but it also works because he does have something, he does have a strong will to survive. Now we're trying to avoid spoilers here, but I have to say that Covenant does commit one very awful, very terrible act early on in the story. And that act that he commits does cast a rather long shadow on him and on the whole of the book. Is this a good thing or a bad thing that we have this anti-heroic character? Usually I have a sense either that I like a character or I like to hate the character. And if they're an ornery curmudgeon, well, maybe so much the better, right? It's a bit more complicated here. With Covenant, Donaldson has created a character who I, I find harder to evaluate than most characters. What I can say is that I don't like Thomas Covenant, but he is a very well-drawn and engaging character. And I found him engaging enough to want to keep reading him. Covenant is a tragic figure, yes, an anti-hero. A man who cannot allow himself to experience beauty and joy because he believes that his continued survival depends on disbelieving what is in front of him. And this connects to the leprosy angle, and that whole thing is very well done. It's a very compelling motivation. It makes a lot of sense when you get into it. You might say he's a doubting Thomas. Apropos, well, yes. Donaldson was the son of Christian missionaries. Now, going beyond Covenant, there are a number of secondary characters. What I think you'll find is that they're much easier to love. Now, I'll grant you, they benefit by comparison with Covenant. But even so there are some incredible character moments. Indeed, one of the recurrent themes in this story is the willingness of the secondary characters to make incredible sacrifices for Covenant, believing, as they do, that he is the only one who can save the land. I think this aspect of the story was particularly well done and was sometimes quite moving. Speaking of sacrifice, I would say this is a key theme in the novel. I think Donaldson does particularly well in exploring two different approaches to sacrifice. On the one hand, Covenant has had to give up everything because of leprosy. He's lost everything. And he's become bitter and resentful because of those sacrifices that he was forced to make, in effect. By contrast, other characters in the novel make their own very considerable, sometimes very painful, sacrifices for Covenant. And they exemplify more positive qualities. 
qualities that were often very moving. Now, another theme is good and evil. There is a battle between good and evil in this story, like Lord of the Rings. And it almost reminds me of Paradise Lost. You have an anti-hero in a paradise-like world. Now, let's talk world building for a moment. Donaldson's fantasy world is called The Land. It is a place of beauty, of wonder. It feels very Tolkien-esque on the whole. And you have to understand that Donaldson is one of the more skilled of the Tolkien imitators. You have to recall this was 1977, the same year as the publication of The Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. It isn't just that Tolkien imitation was the in thing. From what I've heard, I wasn't around back then, Tolkien imitation was the way you could maybe be taken seriously as a writer of fantasy. It proved to publishers, Shannara in particular proved to publishers, that there was a market for fantasy for adults that wasn't just called Lord of the Rings. Now, all that to say, I have to be honest, the world building suffered somewhat by comparison with Tolkien. The land is beautiful, it has wonderful sights, but I couldn't help feeling that it was somewhat derivative. That said, this is also a portal fantasy, which is a fun and more original element, and something that does distinguish it from Lord of the Rings, in addition to having an anti-heroic protagonist. All of that to say, I have to give this book a very solid four out of five stars. It is a very good book, and I'm impressed at Donaldson's skill in keeping me invested in a story with such an unlikable protagonist. Now, let's wrap this up. Who is this book for and who is it not for? If you like morally gray protagonists, including and especially anti-heroes, there's a good chance you'll like this book. Covenant may be prickly as a cactus, but he kept me turning the pages. Now, I led with the Breaking Bad comparison, so I'll say that if you, like me, are obsessed with Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, you may really enjoy this book. Covenant is no Walter White, but he is interesting and tragic, which is what you want in an antihero, I think. Now, you may prefer your protagonists to be more conventionally heroic, in which case this book is probably not for you. I know many readers very understandably have trouble getting past the very awful thing Covenant does, and I get it. I see where they're coming from. I'll say, too, that if you like Grimdark in particular, there's a decent chance you'll like this book. It isn't nearly as dark and gritty as a lot of modern Grimdark. But there's a good chance you'll gravitate toward Covenant as the flawed anti-hero that he is. Now, if you are a very dedicated modern Grimdark fan, this book may suffer by comparison. It may just not be dark and gritty enough for you. I didn't have that problem, but you might. On the other side of the spectrum, if you prefer fantasy stories that have stronger themes of romance, beauty, and joy, you may want to give this one a pass. I'll say, too, that if you like classic fantasy, you should probably give this book a try. It's a classic for a reason. So if Lord Fowl's Bane by Stephen R. Donaldson sounds like the anti-heroic classic fantasy you've been craving, check it out in the link below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.